the ETH spot ETF will happen as well. Of course. It, it'll be later and everyone's going to, as soon as the Bitcoin one is done, they'll front run it by going to the ETH one because they know that's the next one. We will see that. We will see, you know, the rise of the hedge fund industry, the capital coming in, the pension funds coming in, you know, Matt Halstead and Mike from Texas Teachers are kind of showing the way and, and how that's done. So they're all coming and it will all happen over time. The Bitcoin ETF, I don't think of it as a one-off event. People are thinking of it as like this liquidity injection into the crypto economy, and I'm saying it's a trade agreement. Trade agreements really start working when people are starting to get a return on their capital in that new economy, and then they pile in. You know, do you remember the, you know, when people, when China started opening up and people started putting a little bit of money there? Before you knew it, you'd be in Shanghai and everybody's been posted there, being given a, like a billion dollars, set up an office for us there, figure out how to make money. That's what will come. So I'm less concerned about the start, but this pipe is going to be an important pipe to bring kind of RIAs and others into the space as it moves. As the spot Bitcoin ETF approaches, with less than two months until the final deadline, the financial landscape is buzzing with anticipation. Macro expert Raul Pal offers a unique perspective in his recent interview, suggesting that amidst the prevailing focus on Bitcoin, it might be an opportune moment to turn attention towards Ethereum. Pal emphasizes the widespread awareness of the inevitable Bitcoin ETF, indicating that money may have already anticipated its arrival. However, he introduces the idea of a forthcoming Ethereum spot ETF, backed by major players like Kathy Woods, Aaron Bestis, and Grayscale, already in the pipeline. Pal speculates that the next flow of money could gravitate towards Ethereum, especially considering Bitcoin's remarkable 100% surge in 2023 compared to Ethereum's 50%. In exploring this potential investment shift, Raul Pal dissects his investment hypothesis in the latter part of the video. He navigates the nuances of the evolving cryptocurrency market providing insights into the dynamics influencing investment decisions. With Ethereum poised as a candidate for increased attention, PAL's breakdown offers valuable insights for those contemplating investment strategies in the evolving landscape of digital assets. If you think about the halving, it's so beautifully timed. Last time and this time, I can't remember the previous time, but last time is like, okay, we're going to reduce the supply of Bitcoin whilst we're going to jam the maximum amount of fucking money into the system as possible. Here we are again, going into some liquidity, whatever that's going to look like, plus the Bitcoin spot ETF all around the same time of the halving. It's like, you couldn't ask for a better picture. As, as you know, if you zoom out, put it on a log chart, it is, right? It does trend perfectly. It's just that the, the cycle within that trend when you don't put them on a log chart look horrific and most people don't have the stomach for it you and i have been around this long enough to realize the pain is part of the the risk is part of the, the reward yeah you, you have to go through that to have an asset that goes up 20x you know each cycle so i think it's been decoupled for a while as you say it feels that new capital's coming into the space because it's moving out of the risk curve so we saw bitcoin going up first part of the what i call crypto spring so all year is bitcoin and that was driven by i think just alts bleeding and that washing machine. But what we're starting to see is the movement towards the ETF and that gets front running of capital from other people as well, hedge funds and others. And then eventually we got the news today that BlackRock has probably started to buy some, who knows how much that is, but let's call it a couple hundred million bucks either way. So the way to think about the ETF, I think it's really useful. Here's the crypto economy and it has been starved of new capital recently. And the ETF is a trade deal between TradFi, the TradFi economy and this new economy. So we've just started a trade deal. Doesn't mean Mean we're going to get the trade but it's but it's looking like we'll start to get foreign direct investment into the crypto economy what happens then is how i think about this my mental model is okay so the money goes into bitcoin first but everybody who's been in this market has been front running it by owning bitcoin so then the next thing they'll go, go is well they're going to do the the eth etf next of course that index the money that index of the top 50 altcoins right yeah you know it'll go to the eth etf that will run and then meanwhile we've got other stories of things that are getting traction solana Chainlink, others that are starting to rise as the capital's coming into the space and people are placing risk bets in things that they think might work in the site. I think that you think bigger than I do. So maybe these things don't surprise you, but never maybe in my bingo card for any time in the future would I have had every presidential candidate who's not 400 years old taking a position on Bitcoin. I understand that uh, Biden and Trump probably won't talk about it much. And Larry Fink going on national TV and calling crypto 
a flight to quality. In a million years, I don't know that I would have had Larry Fink saying that, especially when the market is down. Although I guess we should, when the market is down is the perfect time for him to say it, but still. It's really interesting. You know, he, he won't say these things. He's not like Paul Tudor Jones or a hedge fund manager can pretty much say what he wants. He controls one of the largest financial institutions on earth. A flight to quality tells you that you need one. Yeah, that, that, that's right. He's telling you how screwed you are by calling anything a flight to quality. And so, you know, I think it's the banking issue is the problem because you know everybody saw you know, bitcoin really started taking off when the banks were struggling i saw this firsthand in europe back in 2012 and 13 with cyprus bitcoin exploded because people understood you couldn't keep your money in the bank and that's when i first got into the whole space and here's it's happening in the us again and people are like oh i get it now but yes it's a really big statement for larry fink to say that yeah you and i can say it all day it makes no difference but him yeah that's a deal that's a big deal and the presidential candidates and we're seeing a potential potentially pro-crypto speaker of the house if the republicans can actually get their shit together to put anyone in i mean we're this is main stage man we're not the little name of the flyer anymore we're up at the top of the coachella right it is and the reason being is the democrats which is a very boomer driven current cohort of leaders there are looking after their own which is the disenfranchised boomers on the coasts okay fine but there's a 86 million millennials who just don't have the same economic interest as those retirees. So I think that these, this other cohort of politicians is thinking, huh, well, there's a bunch of voters we can get behind a single issue, yeah. which I don't care if it's yet another slimy politician with another agenda, or at least it's getting the right agenda. Markets almost always go up in the presidential cycle last year. Very simply, more cowbell. Yeah. Is they want to give out money to everybody who can vote. So they, you know, have you noticed how many of these coincide with recessions? Almost all of these people come in, the four-year cycle is all the kind of same bloody thing. I was going to say, so is the same Fed for your cycle we just talked about and the Bitcoin having and the presidential election cycle effectively aligned. Essentially, yeah. Essentially is. It's all the same bloody thing. And the stimulus always comes at this point. So 2024 should be a lot of stimulus. Then the new government comes in. They produce stimulus. Those seem to be the two big stimulus years. We're coming through the stimulus stop shrinking year, which was this year, which is the, the spring, the macro spring or crypto spring. And then we go into the summer. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't actually thought about that. What you want to do is look at things versus Bitcoin coin and see where things are. Now, ETH has always been very interesting to me because the whole down cycle, it, it didn't do the down 90% versus Bitcoin. Many of the existing alts do because we know it's a massive ecosystem. Also, ETH, everything changed for me when A, got deflationary in large activity because actually the biggest activity is in a bull market. So it becomes scarcer in a bull market. That's like, okay, nobody really thought that one through. The other thing is it now has a yield. And if you think of institutions, they like things with yields. So they don't like gold because it doesn't have a yield. ETH does. So ETH has been actually my bigger bet but i've recently been switching into solana as my bet can't be bad about that i don't know when you started recently but i, I started i started buying solana last year june through till december to average and i just had the feeling and i looked at the chart and i saw the solana ecosystem and you throw all the worst news possible and it's the worst sam coin and you know just the i was, I was just gonna say the best argument for solana is it isn't dead <laughs> That's right. And then I saw people like Tolly, you know, who's, he's just classy. He's just so good. And I'm like, okay, this is really interesting. I'd met him previously and saw the kinds of people he was involved with. And they were like the heads of all of these amazing businesses. I'm like, obviously can't talk about it publicly, but like, okay, this is amazing. And then I learned about, I don't know if you, have, have you gone down this fire dancer rabbit hole yet? I haven't I, really. I, I mean, public. only very superficially. I, uh, I have not gone really yeah. public on it, uh, but I, I'll write some stuff out of it because I've been writing about it for the Real Vision Pro Macro people and, and for Global Macro Investor, but I hadn't even heard about it. But I went to Mainnet and there's Colleen from Brevin Howard, who's a good friend and an amazing person. She was on stage and she was like, and, and yeah, Fire Dancer, that's obviously a big bet that we've got that's that we think is really important. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, Colleen. But she knows a lot of stuff I don't know. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then Anatoly comes up and he's speaking and he starts talking about Fire Dancer and, oh yeah, you know, it, we think it can do 600,000 to 1.2 million TPS. And that I'm like, what? And I was thinking at the time, maybe it's some sort of layer two, blah, 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 compromise. So I went back home. I was looking at the charts, which I have been for a long time of Solana versus E and Solana versus Bitcoin. I'm like, this looks like a fucking rocket ship. What is going on here? And so I started looking in and watching the interviews with the jump trading team who built Fire Dance and realized it was a separate validator for ETH actually, uh, for Solana, Solana. that exchange. 
that increases the the security of the entire chain itself and that yes these speeds were right because it was being built by people who were trying to build light speed for high frequency trading and you know tolly's going yeah this is the real deal this is what we should have done in the first place and i'm like okay this is huge i mean that that solves the trilemma like hey, we've never heard of a coin where you can get better security with faster speed right no and the speed here i mean just think of the the quantum this is so we've got solana at supposedly 65,000 tps we've got a layer two like polygon over the brat the same but less secure than a layer one okay fine this is a layer one of solana that does 20x so they're saying it's fast enough to run the entire securities industry. Twitter only runs at 24,000 TPS. So you can run all the social media, you can run high frequency trading, you can do anything. So all I think is use case. Use cases explode and it just becomes very interesting. So that's why I'm very bullish in, in all. Raul Pal's optimistic outlook on the imminent Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs is shaped by his insightful macroeconomic lens, bringing to light a potentially overlooked opportunity within Ethereum and altcoins. Amidst the fervor surrounding Bitcoin, Pal's perspective transcends the dominant narrative suggesting that Ethereum, and by extension, other alternative cryptocurrencies, present a noteworthy investment prospect. Despite Bitcoin's remarkable surge in 2023, Ethereum's more measured gains underscore the untapped growth potential that PAL finds compelling. The key catalyst for this paradigm shift lies in the anticipated introduction of the Ethereum spot ETF, with backing from industry giants such as ARK Invest and Grayscale. This impending development not only symbolizes a departure from the Bitcoin-centric narrative, but also signals a significant turning point in the investment landscape. The Ethereum spot ETF, with its institutional backing, holds the promise of reshaping capital flows, redirecting substantial investments toward Ethereum. Powell's bullish stance suggests that Ethereum's growth trajectory, as illuminated by this strategic move, demands serious consideration for investors navigating the dynamic landscape of digital assets. As Raul Powell dissects the intricacies of this evolving market scenario, his insights provide valuable guidance for those seeking to align their investment strategies with the unfolding dynamics of the cryptocurrency space. The potential for Ethereum's ascent, fueled by the impending ETF and institutional support, adds a compelling layer to the broader narrative of cryptocurrency investment. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.